spotlight myself. All right. Good morning. It's the last class of snow and winter, which we really have only done snow. I was going to do some winter scenes, but it gets kind of blah and boring. So we're doing all snow. Um, so today I'm doing, um, well, I'll switch the camera in just a second. So we're going to do at least one. I'm using a nine by 12 sheet of UART that I've used before. So when I switch the camera, it's going to seem like a bit much. Um, I'm going to turn my camera on, which is going to knock me off for a second here. Um, there we go. It was, I had some really crazy colors underneath of it. So I, I washed off the painting and then the underpainting stays. So that always happens. If you go to reuse your UART paper and you take it out back with the hose and you spray it all off, if you have an alcohol wash underpainting, that underpainting will be intact. So you can either reuse it exactly as it is, or you can very tediously erase it away, or you can just paint over it. So um, I'm thinking I might try today to do a second underpainting on top of that underpainting. I'm gonna see what happens. I'm gonna switch cameras here. You'll see what I'm talking about. So as you can see, that's a really bright red. Uh, reds and that's oranges red and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a little crazy. So the top one is the the reference that I'm going to be working with today. This is one up here. Um, since we did do a little bit of pine trees last week with the one big branches hanging over, I thought we'd do that. Um, if I end up accidentally painting really fast, I'll move on to that one with an eight by eight. And if you just want to sit back and watch, you can. Um, these are images, free images from Google. So we all know the rules about that. Um, these are just for practice. These are not for competitions. Blah, 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 blah. I do not know who the photographers are. Um, we are just using it for practice. So, especially because I don't know who the photographers are. This is just for practice. If you do use photographs from someone else, you should always give them credit for their work and their vision and their Photoshopping capabilities and all that kind of good stuff. Um, you can see I did erase, they because re they were really heavy, almost black trees. It's a really cool place called, was it Evans Bridge? Yes. It's out by uh, Basto. Um, hmm. The trees crisscross. So you see the, the cross here when you turn it this way, they crisscross over one another. It's really cool. Um, interestingly, though, I don't feel like it paints very well. <laughs> I painted it, and I didn't like the crisscross. I think it, it. I think it does become confusing unless you're looking at a photograph. Yeah, or so over there, and you know. Yeah, what it is. exactly. So sometimes that happens, and sometimes you you need a little more than uh, than just. Um, the painting, sometimes the photograph is necessary. So you're not, it's going to be hard to see. I'm going to just do a, a little quick pencil sketching for myself. If you can see it, I hope you can. Um, just doing that tree line. What I would like to do with this whole tree line, which is very simple and pointy, right? These trees are quite pointy, which is fine. Um, I have to vary it up here. That one tall one is almost in the center. Um, I'm gonna make those trees very magenta purple. I wanna see what that ha what happened. Again, um, oh, somebody stole my rubbing alcohol. I have some. Oh, thank you. Um, I just want to see if that kind of works out. 
nicer than that. So I'm going to take, see, this is one of those Soho's, so it's pretty bright. Who needs that? Oh, for the under. Yeah, for oh, the okay. underpainting. I'm going to change things up a little bit. Adding an underpainting to an underpainting. Thank you. That's plenty. Thank you. Um, let's see what happens with this red that's there and all that kind of good stuff. Um, I've got enough bright oranges and things under here that I'm not really worried about it. The only thing I might do is erase where the brackish water is. Wait. Hmm. Who's that? Oh, you mean on there? On there, yeah, no, yeah. Where on the, the board where the brackish water is, that didn't really wash off very well. It's kind of thick and it's a weird kind of an orange. So I just want to get that knocked down just a little bit. So I'm just taking my white, what is it the, the high polymer eraser? And that knocks it down nicely little paintbrush and swish away all the little crumbles. Um, sometimes you'll notice the, the eraser will start to like gunk up and it'll get a little heavy. Just push a little harder and you'll get through it. Um, so the only thing I'm going to wash in real fast is this magenta and see what happens. It is a pretty light magenta, so it might be, it's not really, on this side, it's not doing much. But it's mixing with that orange. So that's kind of giving it a fun change. And as you know, you can paint over whatever underpainting you do. So this is not a permanent thing. I will be interested though, some of these old marks from the other painting have, um, I guess where I rolled, they're pretty, pretty in there, which is fine. Well, this is a whole lesson on color theory. You can see the, the same color move across the paper with other colors underneath, how it looks completely different. So we'll let that dry for a second. Um, so if you're working, obviously, on a fresh piece of paper, if I were working on a fresh piece of paper, I would do the orange in the sky and the pink under the snow or vice versa, um, or all orange or all pink. Um, I have a little bit of both on the top and the bottom, so I'll just stick with that. I'm not worried about redoing that. Um, so I'm going to let that dry for a second while you guys do that. I am going to erase a little bit more up at the top here, hold it, because I'm pushing a little harder. It's interesting. I, I don't think I, I guess I must not have never used a Soho pastel before for an underpainting because now it's drying. It's lighter. Yeah, it's like, um, yeah, it's like a watercolor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. I'll give that another minute. It is drying pretty quickly. I can start now, you know, I say I might not paint that fast today, but when I'm looking at this, I am going to spend a lot of time on the trees. The, um, the sky is pretty simple, right? A bit of a gradation. We have a nice bright spot um, that's going to cause all those shadows and the snow. So things to think about. In our photograph, we get really deep blue up here. They're really, really light in the middle. Um, 
I don't physically have enough room. I that gradation's really tight for me. I, it it could be Photoshop or it could be real. I'm not sure, but I don't have a lot of space to make that really light to really dark happen. So I won't get as deep as that blue is up there. Um, I will put some nice creamy whites and pinks like we had last week. Um, and the way the photograph looks, you know, there's a little bit of blur on the edges and there's little bits of like the creamy yellows and pinks kind of hanging out right around the tree's edge, um, which I will put a little bit of that in there. Um, and then once I get to painting the trees, go from there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take care of the sky and get that out of the way. And um, and I still might even then move to the foreground to the snow next, only because, again, it's a pretty, quote unquote, simple. I say simple I very gingerly because I know the second I say simple, I've just cursed myself. So although since this is the snow, I'm going to get rid of those tree reflections, little crisscross tree reflections. I don't want to fight something so dark. But this is also a good, if you don't ever wash off your paper, this is just kind of a good thing to see how it works, what happens, what can't happen. All right, so looking for those nice creamy yellows again that we used last week. This one again is a Soho. Um, the sun's a little bit off to the side. It's a little brighter than I wanted it to be. Um, but the Soho brand, the pigment is not as strong um, because it is a little bit less expensive. It has a little more binder in it. Um, Dentist office trying to confirm my appointment. Um, wait. Oh, I don't know what they're calling for. I don't have an appointment yet. <laughs> it's gonna be a while. Maybe they have an opening now. Um, so as I'm going through, I can still see, even though I'm pushing really hard, I can see a lot of things underneath. Um, and that's oh on the screen it looks very, very bright. Um very very bright but you can kind of see a little bit i can still see some of the other stuff through it so i'm going to add a different brand on top let's see what i have out here i might have to this is a terry ludwig okay. oh, so much richer not only in pigment but in How do I try? It's like how it sticks, right? It sticks. Renee, what color is the Terry Ludwig you're using? Um, it literally is the same color as the that Soho. Oh. It's just a nice creamy white. Creamy white. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought. I'm going a little crazy with the creamy white because it'll be mixed in with a little bit of pink. There is some pink kind of showing through. Again, that could simply be the um, the photography, the way they kind of pushed it. Um, I'll get the pink that I had out from last week, which doesn't look, looks very pale and white. So let me get a different one. Um, That's going to be too much. Let me see how I feel about it. Yeah, it's not terrible. So this is just a nice true pink. Just going to kind of skirt along in there. I do realize the more I stand back and grab a stick and whatnot that my trees are very, they're 
almost a little too uniform. Um, I'll adjust that as I start to build the trees. But for right now, it's just kind of like that the sun. We want the yellows and the whites to have their space first. So I'd rather put too much space of the lighter colors um, so they have their true brilliance to shine through. And then I'll add, I'll build the trees up into them. Making a nice pale. All right, last week I cheated and I got all my other sticks out. Let's see. See if I'll feel the need to do that. <laughs> so this is a nice turquoise. It's a little richer than I wanted it to be, but that's all right. I can put some yellow on top of it. Tone it down. So that's what I mean by I don't really have enough room. It's a big jump to get to that dark. I feel like what's happening with all the, the variety of colors that's underneath there. Let's come back to that pale yellow. Give a little. I haven't blended anything yet. I've just kind of layered things with one another. I want to see what happens first. looks a little soft, but that's okay. I kind of am all right with that. I'm going back to that initial pink that looked really, really pale, just for the sense of kind of mixing things up a little bit, going over everything with it just to kind of lighten some things up. It's a really, really pale blue, and it's a unison. So, with this much pigment underneath, it gives me a little bit more of a blending action. I'm not pushing very hard, so it's using the pigment that's with it. All right, I think I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to turn off the light for a second. Maybe you guys can get a better view. Oh, that's what I forgot. My white just went on. So there's a little bit more of a variety in that. Not quite so blown out. I, let me go get my white spoon off. All right, coming back in. I like that so far. I'm pretty happy with it. All right. How's everybody going on their sky? Any problems? Oh, that's pretty. But... <clears throat> So what's going through my mind right now is I'm just kind of, I'm working out how I think I want the trees to go, right? Um, we all know that that evergreen green is really dark, but it's also very smeary. And I don't want it to be that smeary once I start to put the snow on top of it. So I don't think I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I have a really, really, really dark teal turquoise um, that on screen it's going to look almost black. But that stick itself is a little bit harder than my evergreen greens. My evergreen greens, regardless of the brand, the pigment
pigment is just really rich and soft and smeary. So I always get in trouble with that. Whatever elements in it. Yeah, whatever, whatever makes that up. So I'm going to start with a little bit of a harder deep color so that when I do go and layer, I can nicely sit the lighter colors on top. So that could be something to consider for yourself. If you have something a little bit harder that can go underneath, maybe it is even an actual hard stick, um, or it could be something like Rembrandt, things like that. So I'm just gonna give a little hint, little light drags. And some of those trees, if you really kind of look at those treetops with the way the sun is on them, you could almost just make them like a light purple or a light blue. They don't even necessarily need any of, you know, much of any of this color. And I think the other thing I might do, because as we know, UART doesn't have a texture, but it has a texture, right? It kind of, no matter what you do, it'll pick up on some of the high spots and whatnot. It looks nice and gray on top of some of that. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a light little blending in place where it's on the purple. I don't want to go crazy with it, um, with the blending. I know I got out on a pipe insulation, just to kind of settle the texture of it, not necessarily cover up all of the magenta that I put down, but just, oh. and almost do the whole little, directional mark making because we know there are pine trees <laughs> almost like we're crafting for a minute like a sponge it's picking up some of that sky that i went over i'm okay with that for right now after this i'm going to go ahead and put some of that foreground snow in um, I might not develop it all the way through, but I feel like, you know, last week I almost did the whole top of the painting and then the bottom of the painting. I'd like to get a little more information all over. This time. I can still see some of that magenta, not a lot. Um, and it looks a little heavy for right now, which is fine because I haven't put the snow on the tree. I'm breaking up some of those shapes and this the height a little bit. So it looks a little mushy. It's not out of focus, it's just mushy. <laughs> Um, gosh, that is so, that light, let me move it up a little bit. Like I need the light, but at the same time, it really blows out. It really reflects on that blue. That's a little better. It makes it look really white on screen. Okay. 
pretty. Okay. So once I get some of that snow built in there, at least the underpainting will make sense. <laughs> Actually, it almost looks like snow. Um, I'm going to start with the shadowy color. Again, this, this photograph is very blue. Look at the bottom one, though. I mean, there's lots of, like, lavenders and pinks and peachy pinks and things like that. So feel free to add more lavender into the shadow shapes. The whole painting could be more of a lavender kind of a feel. It doesn't have to be all just straight up blues. Um, or you can start with lavender and, and layer the blues on top just to get something a little bit different. Um, make sure that you're aware of the directional lines that the reflection is making. See how it alters as it goes. It's not all the same exact, it varies because the sun is seemingly right there. So the reflections, they change direction. So just be aware of that. If you need to sketch in a little light line, you can do that to get how it changes. It's not quite the one perspective focal point. It's close though. It's it's a little bit similar to that concept. Although I put it in those. And remember, wherever you are aiming this to, now you gotta make sure that you've emphasized enough in here that the brightness is coming from that one spot. So I'm going to reiterate some of that brain. And of course, it's funny because that's the one spot in the underpainting that was kind of dark and lingering. So we'll see how far I get with that. This is nice, right? So I'm thinking though, like just thinking out loud here, if I can't get the brightness that I wanted, I might take it down a little bit, try again, or use some workable spray fix if I can't seem to get it to do what I need it to. But I'm not ready to make that decision yet. All right, I'm gonna start with some of those snow shadows. Um, well, maybe I will put some purple underneath there. Just talking about it, I've got purple in the trees. This is a Terry Ludwig, but it looks very similar to the color that I started with. So I can put the blue right with it. It's not gonna be completely overbearing. Hmm. I can add a little bit up top just to balance some things for a minute. I'm not going crazy with it, just placing a little bit of it. Hmm. I'll be more specific once I start to get into the the lightest of the snow. However, you know, looking at this, I say the lightest of the snow, most of that snow is in shadow on the trees. Um, there's only a couple of spots that it's in bright light. So remember that when you're picking your, when you're picking your sticks, the snow that's on the foreground is the brightest where there's streaks of light are. Even though this, there's a couple of those little trees up front, they have some nice brighter snow, it's still shadowed snow. So I'm taking a nice medium blue just to go right with that lavender. Just 
just kind of layered it with each other. Um, on screen, you can really see the difference between the two colors because again, that blue is reflecting. Um, so I would say this blue is probably on the lighter side. So I wanna go into a richer blue for what's on the trees. Let me see what to grab. Test this one. This one might be too much. Might be too dark. Maybe not for down here. Oh, you can barely see it, but I like it. Kind of in the violet family, but I'm just going to get a little bit of it. Lightens things up a little bit. Uh, it's hard to see on the screen, so you have to kind of look for it. This is the blue that I would, I would put in trees a lot. Hide it in the branches just to make things a little more interesting. I'm staying on the side of my stick. I've not been very specific with anything just yet. This was to be a little grayer. That's okay. It is just try. This one might be a little too bright, but I'm gonna see what happens. Ah, it's barely a level up from what I had in my hand just now. So maybe. Just creating a little bit of variety at the tree line itself. We darken it up just a little bit. But right now, it starts to be a little shadowed. It's a little much to carry through into the foreground. So even though it's super early on, I'm stepping back a lot because there's a lot of simplicity in the shapes, especially in this one. There's a things can go a little wonky fast, again, based on those angles, based on the shapes of the trees, based on a lot of different things. So step back often, more often than you normally would. This is the turquoise that I have in the sky. I might kind of throw that in there. That's interesting. It's you did lavender, lavender first, right? I did do lavender first. <laughs> I think I might just put that down as the base of the lighter color. And, you know, even though they're very distinct changes in value, there's no hard line in the snow. There's no really, really stiff line. So be careful of that. The lines can kind of work over one another. Nothing is necessarily that specific. Changing directional marks, I realized I was very stripey there. And this turquoise that I'm using right now, it's not the brightest of the brights. It's not going to be the top color. It's just the base for something a little bit brighter. But it blends nicely with the other colors that are already there. that shadow just like last week kind of ebbs and flows it's not just straight shadow straight light whatnot i'm 
Okay. Yeah, just like this. Oh, that one is in there, but like I think I do it that next. Okay. But yeah, there's like that would be that other blue. Under the trees. trees. This is under the yeah, trees. Yeah, under the trees. Yep. So this is a Terry Ludwig. I'm just gonna, it's almost white, it has a little yellow to it. And give it a nice little multi directional. Again, I haven't blended yet. I'm not saying that I'm not gonna. I'm just waiting, you know, just kind of giving it some time. Um, I think I'm going to let that be for a minute. I'm just thinking. It could go a bit brighter in a couple of places, but I'm gonna wait. Uh, I'm going to keep this stick out, which I just used, um, because it is kind of blending nicely. I'm going to take that nice medium blue that I added on top with the lavender, and I'm going to work with that for a minute. Start to put in some shapes of the snow, of the branches covered with snow. Um, I'm still using the side. Now, this particular piece is small because that's what's left of it. This was a Terry Ludwig. Mm -hmm. So it was <laughs> more than twice its size. <laughs> um, I have one of those things where I don't want it to be, I don't, I don't, I, I don't want, like, I, I know I want to see branches, Right. This is something again we'll work on landscape, the landscape stuff. I don't I want to see that there's the the way the branches are formed, but I don't want to see branches. So I, I I'm very careful to step back a lot to make sure I'm not making a pattern that I didn't want, that I'm not creating our little kid Christmas tree where you draw and you know. I don't want to do that. I don't want to just have the arrows going up in space. So I'm just using the side of the stick just to kind of give a little shimmy and drag in the direction. And it's not the only color that will be in the trees. So I don't need to cover every single aspect of the trees. This is just one of a couple of colors that will be used to make the snow on the branches. Yeah, color. Um, I do see that there's shorter little trees in the foreground. I'm not necessarily ignoring them, but I'm not necessarily paying attention to them, if you know what I mean. So if they happen to be built, they happen to be built. If they don't, they don't, you know. Um, I'm not counting trees. You guys know me enough by now to know that I'm not going to have exact anything um, to the photograph. So... There may be a similar number of trees, but no. I 
And so some of it, I'm just kind of dragging out into the sky. Um, like I said, it's not the final of anything. So it is so hard to not create exact patterns. About this for a minute. Let's see what's going on. Stand back. I always like the pinks in the sky and stuff. I think I'm going to try and incorporate the pinks down below in the snow. <coughs> okay, good. So let me grab that pink before I get too many layers of snow. Kind of shuffling it in there. I don't want it to be too specific, but um, it would definitely show up in the lighter sections of snow, if anything. Just bring a little bit of it in. And then I, when I work in some of the brighter colors on top again, it'll have its place. Let's see. So again, I don't want to go white, white. Nothing is totally bright um, on the trees. This is a bit of a pinkish lavender. I can put near the treetops and especially near the trees that are near the sun. Um, that's the color. Just made a little strip of it. Can you see it? No. It's very similar to the first color that I used. Um, like a really pale magenta. Yes, that sounds like a delivery truck. <laughs> I always tease them. I'm like, it's breaking your food, man. It, I think last weekend it yeah. was. I, last, a week ago, I think, because I was up and I had to go deliver paintings in Tennant oh, Square, and then it, it, oh, was, right. it was either almost full or right at full, so it was sometime last week. Again, stand back a lot. I'm standing back a lot. Um, if I'm up close, my mark making looks terrible. But if you're from, but when you know you stand back a little bit, it just it comes together differently, mm -hmm. and you're less inclined to just keep pushing. Let me test this color. This might be the brightest of my shadows. So. I don't know that I'm ready for it yet, though. I'm going to set this aside. So this was a nice pale blue. Um, but if it's going to be my lightest color, I don't think I'm ready for it yet. What else do I want to put in there? I guess I should put in a little more turquoise. But that could be very similar to the top. Yeah, that's the same value. I just set the sticks next to one another, and it's the same value. Um, I think I might stay with the purples, though. 
I, I have kind of pushed away from the really dark. Um, maybe before I get too far, I can emphasize some of that a little bit places. This is one of those times where, you know, maybe you don't want a huge value shift between the two objects and you create more of a tonal piece. That's okay too. Tonal pieces are fun. Um, there's a whole tonal society, as a matter of fact, if you didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Beautiful works, all in kind of a muted. Yeah, very mm -hmm. muted palette. Soft palette. A lot of them do like the same subject study, just different. Yes. Every day. <laughs> and Facebook friends with a couple of them. Mm -hmm. And the one guy, I just crack up because they, I shouldn't make fun. They they just, they talk about him like he's the most brilliant thing in the world. And he has like a little bit of light in one, I don't know. It's hard to explain what he does, but maybe yeah. that's, maybe that's why he's so brilliant. It's hard to explain. Renee, can you take a look yeah. at this for a minute? Yeah. Because I think I'm kind of lost when it comes to the, base of the trees and the okay. foreground beginning. I'm going to pause the recording so I can switch the spotlight so I can see you better. Okay. okay. So I'm already kind of regretting some of that extra dark that I was putting back in. I am just a touch. Just because it can kind of make a sharper line than I wanted it to. You wanted it to be a little blurry. Well, not necessarily blurry, but I don't want to specifically paint individual mm -hmm. tree branches. So that's kind of where. Um, yeah, he needs to just settle a little bit. Things that walking with his friend got no normal. Yeah. Well, there's really nothing there, not even a package. The oh. <laughs> so I was expecting a book today, but I also figured it was coming in the mail, not from the town. So this is just a little bit darker than the magenta that I started with. So I'm kind of working in those shadow shapes for a minute. Mm. I probably in hindsight, you know, because hindsight's always running twenty. In hindsight, I probably should have not gone in with that medium blue right away. I could have done more with some of the darker colors. It's okay. Um, but I will have to redo some of the medium blue that I already did. Mm. That's all right. It's okay. It's all rules that I know. I just completely ignored. <laughs> yeah, I guess you get a little excited, start painting, and then it all goes downhill. Hmm. Or I have a tendency to like, oh, I really like this color. Let me see every place I can put that color. Mm -hmm. And then I've overdone it.
it is funny how you just end up. I just I take away the pattern. I re yeah, you put it back. I in. put it back. Take it out. Put it back. Take it out. <laughs> I had a nice variety going on this side, and now they're all even again. Great. Happens. It happens. Take one down. So now that I take it down, I'm re-exposing some of that underpainting, so I need to put it back. Well, I can probably safely say after this painting, I don't think I'm going to have the uh, spunk to start the next one. <laughs> We're all safe from that happening. We'll see. Who knows? I still have a nice amount of tooth left, so skimming my medium blue back, it doesn't seem to be too much of a problem. So that... This blue is not quite as skimming as the other one, which is probably for the best because I don't want it to be super, super bright. Just want it to. Put in a couple of places. Again, step back a lot. Because you know, sometimes I'm like, oh, I really like the way this mark making looks. And then I do it everywhere. And then I step back and go, oh, you just mm -hmm. really kind of goofed it all up there. So, you know, too, when working from photographs, whether even if it was our own, you know, this one, I just copied and pasted and made a PDF and sent it out. So um, colors are different, lines are different, things are blurred, things are not blurred, you know, it's kind of all over the place. So don't stress about matching. Um, there's a little bit of like a weird kind of a glow here and there. Don't really focus on that too much because um, you know, it's, if, it, if it's a photography effect, try not to worry yourself with it. That's good. You have a nice variety in your tree lines. <laughs> the colors are all the same. They should be muted in the back, I think. Yeah, there could be a couple of them that kind of Faded in the batch, you know? Cheap, yeah. yeah. Um, and think about the ones that are closest to the they sun do. have a little bit of, of pink. Pink and a blurred effect to them just because they're blown out. Yeah. Which again is kind of a photography effect. So, yeah, but that's why but it happens anyway. It. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Mine's looking pretty jumbled right now. I did kind of like last week working on the pastel mat um, when, when it came to texture at the end. Um, I liked the way that the texture kind of felt. 
It is a different beast, that's for sure. I was thinking about using another piece today. Um, another kind of another piece of pastel mat. I don't have any other brands here at home, but is that um, what I have the really thick one. It's thick, really thick, or is that something different? You have the board. Are you talking about the board? No, oh. I have one at home. I think I had even used one day. It's, it's on cardstock. Yeah, yeah, it's printed it's on like cardstock. No, that's no, that's just that's just um, yeah. no, that's thick. This is it's oh, that's got the backing. Uh uh. But it's heavy like that. Yeah. And they yeah. Have different colors. Yeah. Yeah. I have that. Yeah. But you can't use an underpainting with it, you said. Hmm. I think you can. I just haven't. Oh, uh, what's the one that you can't? Le Carte. Oh, uh, that's the one I have. Oh, you have Le Carte now. Oh, okay. Yeah, Le Carte. I can't. You can't do that. Um, But it is interesting how pastel mat, it's like, it needs more. It needs more. It needs more. Nope. We're done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> once, it's, once it's done taking, it's done taking. Mm -hmm. Um, I am gonna take a little bit of pipe insulation and just a little, a little, little soft dragging. I don't want to blend, <laughs> blend, but I'm using just some directional markings to just. I want to, I want to change the textures up, you know. So the trees have a different texture than the foreground. Um, right now everything has the same kind of texture. I'll add more pastel to this once I buckle it a little bit. Uh, but like I said, I don't want to blend for new colors. I'm just softening for the sake of texture. And there's that little whip for me cutting this board. So that's driving me nuts down there. So it, this could be something that helps you adjust your lines too, because you can pull some of the dark into the light and vice versa. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yep. Definitely soften it, although it may look kind of like a robe. I don't really want it to be a robe. Looks pretty good. So now I can go Purple. back and strengthen some of the lighter colors. It's funny because the blue kind of went away. Yeah, more purple. Yeah, more purple shows through now. But that works with your colors. Yeah, it kind of, yeah, it's kind of working. Back. Back in there. Back in there. <laughs> I lost two complete days. They're like Did 48 you? hours. Yeah. Oh. I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna need physical therapy. The girl, the girl that I work with, she ended up she was out for over a week mm -hmm. straight. She had well, she she had like a stomach flu, the oh. norovirus, and then she had a kidney stone on top of it. So she was in the oh. hospital, poor thing. Did you have to do extra work to help out more? Um no. Not as much because I'm not trained on everything. Mm -hmm. So the other guy, I, I have a feeling I'm going to be trained on more things yeah. so for the next time something unexpected happens. You lose, you lose productivity, right? Mm -hmm. Well, and what, what they do, they have so much time sensitivity. Yeah. You can't well, quite. Yeah, you're right. So. No, it's financial. So oh, it's, so oh, it's like gosh. stocks and stuff and if somebody wants the money. <laughs> yeah, they gotta pay a bill. Like, uh -oh. yeah. yeah, like that's what people are there was a couple needed a new roof. You know, you gotta be able to get to that cash. That was us. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just good. Thank God with all the rain and stuff we have. Oh yeah. We got a new roof a couple of years ago amazing how expensive everything is like mm. we really need the house painted because i got a quote for siding at the same time as the roof i about fell over i can't be we ended up painting it ourselves except for the second story that's my we problem didn't. yeah like you know you, you were like wait a minute we can 
we yeah. can paint this house. Like that's kind of where I was at. I ended up not doing it myself, but because I was like, I want scaffolding. Rent me scaffolding, and I'll get up there. But yeah, the I want to fall. You know, there's a lot of that fascia board needs to be replaced. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's all the yeah, uh, it's all that. It's, yeah, yeah, so I don't know, but you know, when they told me it was gonna be, what was it? it was like forty thousand dollars for. For siding now, I was like, oh, oh my god, it's not right. Was that like um cedar or was it like hardy plank or? Oh, it's not yeah. worth it. Don't. We might as well get cedar to put on. Right. There oh yeah. Stuff at that that point. So we, you know, we just didn't do anything. I need to do something though. It's looking, we're looking a little janky over here. <laughs> I need to need to do something. So this is a little bit darker than the blue that I had put down initially for that medium blue. I like the way it's looking up against the dark in the trees. It's giving a nice little shadow. Um, Where are you putting it on the trees or underneath? Underneath the oh, trees yeah. into that shadow. Like, is it more of like a, a snow pile? Like the blue? You, well, yeah, yeah. Um, but I do want to go back to that initial blue that kind of got wiped away. And I'm trying to keep a like a flow, like it's a kind of flat, but it's because it's flat, like a flat, flat just yeah. Like, but you like can gliding see. a lot, dancing along it. Yeah. And you know, don't forget, you can always get your paintbrush out and give it a little drag, directional drag. I'm starting to get a little muddled, but I feel like I still have to. Sometimes the lightest of the snow, you can push a little harder and be a little heavier with. I feel like that's where I'm going right now. I wonder if she barks when she's not here. Oh, I think he does. He, yeah. yeah, I don't even know. Well, I can't imagine him not losing his mind. Oh. Although, it is funny because my husband says whenever I'm not home and he's home, Kaiser just lays there and doesn't move. Because he's protecting you. Like, probably, yeah, right? like all day. He just doesn't move. And then I come home and he's, you know, out and about and barking up a storm. My brain's not working well today. All right, I'm going to pause the recording. If anybody, this is a nice time to refresh your coffee or your tea or get some water, take a stretch. We'll be back. All right, so after kind of walking around a little bit and, and Maureen was saying her sky was too yellow, which I like her sky that yellow, we can add a little bit of that to the snow. So, um, and then when I came back around and looked at mine, I'm kind of in the same position where the sky looks a lot more yellow than the snow down below. So I'm going to add some of that beginning creamy yellowy color, but not everywhere. Um, just to kind of tie it together. I'm going to put it with some of that pink. I did add pink before, but then I did a little bit of blending. So kind of went away. So I'm going to add a little more pink in some spots. And then I can add the yellow with that pink, just like it is in the sky. Mm -hmm. And that can soften up, you know, sometimes we get that extra oh, yeah. bright white. Uh -huh. And you know, that just makes everything look flat. 
So this one we can keep a little light with it. Gives it a little bit of a glow. Make sure to um, keep it clean though because it's got all this blue down here and if I Make start to drag too much, yeah. A little bit awry. I'm going to add some more paint to the trees. Not somewhere. Not everywhere, though. No. I don't want. I don't want every single tree to be exactly the same. I do want some variety in the trees. <laughs> You know, the light hits them all just a little bit differently. You can, you know, have some variety. I see a little too. Once we start to get all these colors on there, though, you know, things start to drag a little bit. They don't give you a nice clean mark. Um, so just be aware of your pressure, how much pressure you have to use. Like, at this point in the game, I probably have to use more pressure than I want to. Mm. Um, you know, so I'm going to have to be careful with my mark making to not have streaky lines or anything like that but again I don't want it to be as bright as the brightest snow down below so hmm. for the sake of mark making we haven't really talked about that with the branches on the snow I mean I talked a little bit about the light shuffle in the beginning um, now that I'm putting those heavier, I have to push a little harder um, to get the next light on there. Think about, you know, the heft that the snow is causing as you're, as you're pushing harder. Just think about the heft and how the, it's just kind of holding all that weight. It's kind of swooping downward. Um, and that'll help you make the mark. It's almost like following the direction of the water. You're just very heavy. The snow is just so heavy. So look, I accidentally made foreground trees. <laughs> so it happens, right? You know, this so far, it's not, it's not like the photograph completely. Um, I don't have the nice crisp top on a couple of these trees. I kind of blurred things out a little bit. Um, I think I'll leave it like that. I don't think. You don't yeah, I, I just don't. I'm not feeling it. I'm not, you know. Um, if I do ever choose to. I might test the waters off to the side and, and maybe work with a little bit of pencil for a second. Mm. The problem is, again, with the greens, you know, trying to put something well, if you in there. That, you got to do it more. Yeah. You got to do it everywhere else. Too. Exactly. So um, I'm going to sit with this for a minute. I don't know that I'm done yet. Keep working. Um, Yeah, I'm not sure just yet, but toning down some of that chassis. Oh my, that phone hasn't been crying this much in class in a long time. <laughs> Only if it was Gabby.
Yeah, it's pretty tonal. I think I'm going to leave it like that. I don't know that I'm going to do much more. If I do much more, it's going to change the direction of my painting completely. I might, you know what, I'm going to adjust a couple of those shadow shapes in the middle. Oh, okay. So this is really lemony. Yeah. yeah um, this is the creamy one right here. That's still pretty bright. bright. Like, it might be too, too sick. <laughs> yeah, this one's probably better, the one that you picked. Yeah, this one's a little better. If you need, I mean, like, maybe put it with the lemony one. Mm -hmm. um, or you can even go into the peachy, peachy family, but then you'd have to start adding it to the sky, too. So. Mm -hmm. <sighs> So I think I'm going to adjust these shadow shapes in here. I know that they're there, but I just, I'm not a huge fan of the way they feel on the way I painted this painting. So I'm going to do something similar with what I did down below, and I'm going to drag blue. Hmm. I'm going to come back and drag more of the pink and yellow. <laughs> Stand back in a second and see how I feel. <laughs> so it's almost like with the whole cloud situation when we've painted clouds in the past and we're trying to get the sunrise and sunset colors in the clouds. You know, we use a mixture of pink and yellow and orange all together to get that glow. Um, and that's kind of where I'm, I'm working with here is just that the pink and the yellow together, you can't have one by itself because it looks a little awkward. But if you put them together, they have a nice kind of glowy peachy pink feel at the same time. Now I want to come back with something bright again. Put it a bit off. Um no, right in here I got a little yeah, a little muted. Mm -hmm. Um it's not how many things good in my box. It's very creamy. Yeah, that's creamy something. So I'm thinking too, you know, when you're working on your own version of a photograph, always take that moment to You know, see, we, we deviate from the photograph, which is awesome. But then we get fixated on trying to make something in the painting look like the photograph. But we've already deviated from the photograph. So you can deviate <laughs> all over. You know what I mean? We get a little of, obsessed with, and like, your shadows go with your trees. Right, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. if you take a tree down, yes. don't put a shadow back where that tree was. Kind right. of a thing. Similar, you know. So these are kind of skinny. So if I'm working on changing my shadow shapes because they're too much, then just kind of take down some of these. Probably should have started with my pinky. You know how I always say, not following my own rules. <laughs> Should have started with tapping with my pinky, and I started with the paint brushes. I'm reworking. I'm doing a little hill there. She does that. This is the first time I've actually touched the snow or any of this with my finger. 
remember you can't unblend. Although, you know, the snow is a nice place to blend as long as it's not in the tree. Once you get into the trees, it gets a little too much. Turn the light off for a second. This one to see. Eh, a little more contrasted. Yeah, now you can kind of see a little bit more on camera, and you can see a little bit more of the pinks and the yellows in the foreground, matching up a little bit with the background. And you can take your paintbrush, and do the little swoopy, just a gentle, and again, this is a nice stiff bristled, it's open. You can just take it and make little drag marks in the direction of the, of the trees there. Um, I'm being super gentle because of what's underneath on mine. Have to, See. So remember what's underneath because that's what's going to show. But you can get some more directional markings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of nice, revealing some of that darkness that I had in the beginning. So that could be another way. Be careful, I'm going to get carried away here in a minute. <laughs> mm. Got a little too mushy, a little too blue. Adding a little bit more. Mm -hmm. That is the nice thing when I'm in a classroom, <laughs> and then you can just hear can the size yeah. and the yeah the change that. Huh. <laughs> yeah. huh. uh, it's a my cue to walk around the room, right? Mm -hmm. huh. I'm gonna stop the recording for here for right now because I'm not gonna do anything for a little bit. If I decide to do something else, I'll turn it back on. All right, so I'm going to do I'm going to do it pretty quickly, like even quicker, quicker than usual, maybe, because I only have we have less than an hour. So it's 1040 right now. It's funny, the last live demo I did for a group up in Tom's River, they kept talking during their meeting and they their meeting lasted for like an extra 45 minutes. Oh, my God. And I brought up with me a, a 16 by 20 sheet of paper to do like a wave demo, which I was really confident on in the two hours that I said I had, but then they kept talking. 
So I managed to do a whole wave painting on 16 by 20 in an hour. Wow. wow. Granted, I had painted that particular wave before. So that helps. All right. So I'm square. I don't want my sun in the middle. There's nice bright stuff over here, nice shadow stuff over here. I'm just going to scooch it this way, which means I'm going to fold the paper. I accidentally paint, uh, printed this reference on photo paper. I was making copies of my son's official rose parade picture uh, and then printed it. So nice photo paper on this one. All right. That's So it looks like there's some kind of horizon back there with the sun. So I'm kind of giving it that little swoosh. There's a little hill. Oh, All right. So I'm just going to make a little bunchy kind of bit to represent the trees. Hill is nice. That is nice and abstract right there. <laughs> okay. I am going to do not even underpainting, maybe. Not. You know what? No. I am not going to do an underpainting. I'm just going to go. All right. Start with my sun. Get that bright. Light going back there. Oh, that is gray. Lightness. Oh, there we go. A lot of nice bright color back there on that horizon line. So I'm gonna spread that bright light a little further than it needs to be. This is the tiniest little piece of creamy white ever but I'm going to keep it handy. <sighs> so this color is about the color of the paper, so you're probably not going to see much of it. Oh, yes, yeah. so much darker. chunks of blue sky. So I'm going to do a little bit of opposite here. I'll put the sky holes in first. Is it the right move? We'll find out. Again, very not seeable on the paper. I don't know that I'm going to incorporate the little flares that go out in there. That's going to work it for me. Um, uh, I see. It looks like some kind of a little mountain range back there. 
Nice little medium gray, purple. I didn't put away any of the colors that I used before, so I'm grabbing a lot of what I've already used um, in the last one. And I'm focusing on this little bit because it's, other than the sky that's up at the top, this little <laughs> circle in the middle here is the furthest away because it's where the sun is. So it's the furthest back. And there's going to be all kinds of things in front of it soon enough when I start to put the trees in there. So. And there is some extra kind of magenta and purple kind of running through. So I'm going to be a little bit extreme for a second in the color choices. So I can set some other stuff on top of it. And a lot of this same color that's happening up top is happening down below. So even though this is a bit of an extreme magenta, I'm going to incorporate it kind of all over in the light a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of place it. So that it's there. Fluffy little pink happening, most like uh, cotton candy. And this is going to be one of those push and pulls back and forth. You're going to have times where you're working more on actual tree trunks, and times you're working more on uh, the foliage. Which, of course, when you start to think about it, and you wonder where this is that would have foliage on the trees and so Full on foliage. Oh, yeah, oh. right. That's Slash, <laughs> yeah, Aspen. <laughs> Slash, you know, mm -hmm. photoshopping. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was October. In October, everything was yellow, it was still foliage, oh, yeah. and it snowed, and it was the weirdest color. Was it? Was like, it was like yellow, gold, like oh, the wow. orange. Yeah. Weirdest light. Like... Creepy. <laughs> yeah, it kind of was. It was kind of cool. When it gets everything. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll use them both. I put something a little grayer than I wanted it to be in there, which is actually the same as what I made that weird kind of mountain range in the back. But I'm putting a lighter blue on top of it in just a second. Because this is just the foliage. I haven't even started the shadows on the trees, just on the snow just yet.
of course, you know, it is a bit of, you know, photography kind of stuff, but mm. that blue is really rich. And we did... so I'm going to start okay. with that and see what happens. Mm. But, uh, Yeah, this blue always feels funny when you use it. It's a, such a pretty color, and then sometimes it just really gets out of hand. And I haven't even put tree trunks in yet. I'm making shadows for trees that don't even exist quite just yet. Well, now you know where to put your trees. Right? Mm -hmm. That is the craziest looking. Adding some of that blue up here. So originally was a little too gray. Talk about the ugly things of the painting. All right. Have to make a decision on blending. Because if I start to put trees in, it's going to be a little difficult to blend after. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to soften, not blend, blend, just like last time. Just give it a little soften. Um, and same thing now. It's so funny. This blue looks so different on screen. I'm going to just kind of set it in place to this little drawing. So with all of this softened, now when I come back, I can put the trees in, I can brighten up some sky holes, I can keep that light nice and bright. Mm -hmm. Just cloud. some trees before I work on the foliage more. It's not very near finished. Sorry. Let's see how far I get. <laughs> Very well.
picked up a new pastel for another my little my big very Ludwig is not cooperating, although that's not the right color. Regretting my decision to the name, that's just. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's hard. Can't through letting it through. Right? Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. ah, okay, okay, okay. Let's get some more information on my tree trunks here. I'm keeping them in the purple family because they're just. Kind of purpley. Now this is a Soho. I wonder if this will roll nicely. This is a bit of a purple. We'll put it with it. It helps me. It's got a nice thin edge to it, so that helps. I can get some of those thin branches up here. Again, this is one of those things you can put as many or as little amounts of trees as you want. Been so busy today up there. Yeah, sleeping, as we can see. That's pretty cool. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank God you're home, so I don't have to be so on, <laughs> on guard. That's why I'm killed. <laughs> Ooh, nice. I really like how this tree is forming. It's really nice. Good, good, good. Yeah, and you can, that, that's a nice softening. Mm -hmm. It'll have to work out. Softening up the trees with some light. It still looks all a little extreme right now because everything is. Mm -hmm. all right. Yeah, Introducing a new color back in, like I think we used to something similar to this last week. A little bit on the peachy orangey side of things. It's a Rembrandt, so it's a little harder, but it's
My brain's thinking hard. I have shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a damn mute. What's up? Um, the globe looks great. And that's important. Did you look? Did you look at the um, summary I wrote about you? Yes. All right, so the second one has your name on it. The first one doesn't have your name on it. It's getting there. Let's say 1104. Let's see how much I can push out of that. Again, I show up with like tons of... Uh, Sticks in my hands, so I gotta let some of those go. Branches in there. So that bit of push and pull between making the branches, mm. hanging the foliage. I'm going to save this for next week. That's all right. It's too much snow. We're kind of over the snow. So we had one pretty decent snow. That's all we needed. And that's all we needed. Mm -hmm. And now I've painted it. <laughs> and mm -hmm. now I'm ready to move on. Flowers. Wait, we are not far from flowers, that's for sure.
I'm stepping way, way back now. <laughs> Wait, I need to get something different in my snub. Let me think about that. I like it. The only thing I would just to try and get rid of that green. Okay. But everything else is wonderful. Just get rid of it totally. Well, Put just cover it. Just, just cover just a little bit more. Maybe, maybe some of the darker blue. You can make it like it's snow shadows. I mm -hmm. mean, I, um, and just keep it in that same value as what it is. But unless you want to put a branch there, it looks kind of yeah, yeah. But everything else looks wonderful. Let's see. <laughs> it's really kind of extra yellowy. What? Oh, it does have very specific. Shadows, very sharp shadow lines at the front. Maybe regretting this step, but that's all right. I've committed. <laughs> It's extreme. What's the uh, reference button? That's okay. It's kind of dancing that lightest of the pink on top of some of these brighter colors. Bad holes are and things like that. Oh. Looks good from a distance. Mm. Huh. This could be like a spring snow. Yeah. Kind yeah, of yeah. blossoms all died out, oh, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trees are a little harsh anyway, but I feel like they're too harsh. So I'm going to. I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. It's not really that I'm feel like, feel like I'm going to miss it. Huh. <laughs>
This is a Soho again, so it's just kind of blending some things, but mm -hmm. I wanted to soften some of that gray purple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gets to I'm going to turn off the recording. I'm tired officially, right? <laughs> it's 11.15.